Hello and welcome to Lunch with Lee. I'm your host Shane Lee. And the show Stuart McGill. Hi. A former New South Wales Australian leg spinner playing 184 first class matches mm. and 44 tests for Australia. During his career he took 774 first class wickets oh, wow. and 208 test wickets at 29.02. Post career he's hosted the Triple M Breakfast, hosted his own wine show called Uncorked and run his own restaurant. Hey Stu. Hey, mate. I'm just sitting you know on. I'm thinking, don't right, you? Right. I hosted his own show, Uncorked. When, <laughs> when, when I started doing this, hey, Shad. Stuart, hey, hey, nice to meet you, man. Yeah. So, don't worry, we're, just don't worry about my intro. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> when we were doing this wine show, so I, I, cause I, I, you know, I get bored and I start thinking about stuff. So I'm thinking about Shane and I are sitting there. We go, mate, maybe we could do one for um, the Asian market. We'll call it Unforked. <laughs> we, maybe, maybe we should do one the virgins. for yeah, Unforked. <laughs> 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 to the Jewish people. <laughs> right, all right. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and our friends who are in wheelchairs unwalked. Yeah. We can do all this sort of stuff. <laughs> also on the show today, Shed Wicker. <laughs> Current comedian. Um, what do you got? Oh, you got mate. Can you can you try? I'm off the clock, mate. You're doing all the heavy lifting on this one, I reckon. So we got a current comedian hailing from the state of Queensland, regarded as one of Australia's brightest talents. Oh. Um, he's a co-host with me on the daily podcast Afternoon Sport. Yeah. Um, away from media, he's a rugby league, NBA, NFL nut. And in terms of rugby league, he supported more clubs than the Deltones. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes. Welcome, Shad. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm now, good. Listen, I oh, don't like the cheap shot about my uh, fandom, but that's I know, fine. But we'll, we'll talk about that. I'll tell you what Rich, the... coming from a St. George fan, how's your <laughs> club going? Oh, we're struggling, mate. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I want to talk about, um, you grew up in Tonga. Were you born in Tonga? I was born in Tonga, moved you, to Australia. From Queensland. Yeah. You were born in Perth. Perth and moved to New South Wales. So yes. this is now New South Wales versus Queensland. Okay. State nice. versus state, Great. mate versus mate. Well, well look, Here we the are. jury's out on that. I've only just met him. Let's just see how we go. <laughs> but it, still, it seems like only yesterday, mate, that um, you made your way over from Western Australia. Yes. And that's 20-odd 20, 20 years ago. So now. 1995. Yeah. And I, I caught the train, actually. So in those days, so 1995, you probably weren't even born then, Chad. No, I was, I was four years old. <laughs> there you go. So in a, a plane trip from Perth to Sydney in those days was 1200 bucks. Like, wow. yeah. expensive. Yeah. But um, to catch the train, first class, so sleeper, three good meals a day, posh on the Indian Pacific, um, was 1400 with my car on. So I filled right. the car up full of my stuff, um, jumped on, and I thought it'd be like James Bond sort of stuff, you know, murder on the Orient Express. Sure. But not. I was the youngest. So I was 25. Mm. Youngest by 25 years. I was sitting in the bar cart after dinner each night talking about conscription, di- drinking Benedictine with all the old Wow. Men. Oh, man, hard work. But... <laughs> <laughs> very, very the old boring. guys or Benedictine? I drank all the old blokes <laughs> under the table, obviously, but, you know... <laughs> And, and, and Shad, um, but you, you live in Queensland now, you're a comedian. I want to ask you, and we've worked together, we've done probably 100 shows now on Afternoon Sport, but um, how does someone get in, into comedy? Like, when, when you've got, you got, what's your family background? Your, your dad is Pakistani. Uh, my dad's Pakistani. Yeah. My mum, yeah. uh, she's Aussie, but she kind of grew up in, uh, yeah. in the Pacific but, for but a bit. A, but a Pakistani dad, he'd probably want you to be a doctor, wouldn't he? Um, no, my dad is, um, my dad's not a very good, uh, I, I say this openly to him, he's yeah. probably one of the shittest Muslims I've ever met in my life. <laughs> uh, and I've met a few because he's related to a bunch of them. But, Cheers, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My old man uh, was a chef. Okay. Um, he's got a pretty wild story, but like he like left Pakistan during like the student uprising at yep. some point. Okay. So he kind of like travelled through. He always tells he's like, man, I went through Iraq, uh, Iran when it was like cosmopolitan Iran. Mm, yeah. And, he's like, and then by the time I decided to come back home, it had completely changed. Wow. Yeah, a so, lot. but yeah. he used to like you know he cooks. Obviously, he doesn't eat pork, but he cooks it. Mm. Yeah. Um, he you know didn't mind a drink for a bit. Mm. Loved to gamble. Okay. Um, and uh, and he also I, I, I don't mind saying this he's not going to care but uh, he also had an affair with my mum and that's how I was born so well, well, he doesn't you're a love to, child yeah I was a love child mate was somebody loves so you? that's how you get yeah. into it <laughs> <That's> <laughs> exactly. what a great answer no you just I think if anyone who wants to do comedy is like the easiest way is you just, you just go to an open mic there's some in great ones around the country but you just got to go and grind it I did radio for a bit and then got roped into doing it by some comedians in Darwin and then yeah so, just so basically what you're doing is you're talking about the reason you said it's easy for you is because you, you're you talking about you yeah pretty you're much about your, yeah, yeah you I it. like stories and stuff and I think I I don't know I, I mean I'm sure there's some kind of deep seated psychological reason but <laughs> yeah sure um, I just like taking the piss so it's, it's easy sure 
I look, we've been mates for years, and but I, I was reading through your numbers this morning. Yeah, your cricket numbers, unbelievable, yeah. right? Yeah, not, not, not the old. Yeah, they are. They're not, really good, by the way. Not, oh, yeah, not the amazing. old black book, but, yeah. but, but yeah, right. at, I've never heard of them. <laughs> but, but you look back at your career, two hundred eight Test wickets. Yeah, you're, you're the you're the best strike rate of any leg spinner of all time. Yeah, are, are you really proud of that? What, what you achieved on cricket field? <laughs> the, uh, it, it, I was very, very proud of it at the time, and I'm I'm very pleased about it. But yeah. the reality is, so I finished playing for Australia in 2008. Yeah. It kind of doesn't really matter much now. We, you know, we, here we are sitting yeah. on the sidewalk in Sydney. <laughs> yeah. You know, who Meter, really ca- meterate has just arrived. Too. Yeah, well, there we go. I mean, you know, I mean, that's my next job. See, that's that's the thing. I mean, the 208 wickets. It doesn't really count much now, does it? You know. And and Chad. Rugby league, do you play rugby league as a kid yourself? No, I like a little bit, but I think my my mum was too scared to let me play right, a yeah. lot of the time. But I played a little bit in my teens, and I played a bit uh, when I went to uni as well. Yep. But I always just loved it. And so, so just correct me, which team are you going for now? <laughs> <laughs> we change mate, every week. Mate, up the Wiles. <laughs> the Warriors. But I'm a, I'm a Queenslander. But you like so. the Dolphins too? Yeah, my girlfriend's a big Dolphins fan now, yeah. so um, they're definitely the on the, the yeah, up the Fins. Yeah, yeah. And when I was working for the Broncos, go the yeah. Broncos, but they don't pay me anymore, so... Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> so you only like people if they're paying you then? For the most part. So why are you hanging out with Shane? <laughs> yeah, yeah, mate, I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> now, Stu, I, I want to say, mate, you were one of my favourite guys to captain. Oh, yeah, good. You, won't, you, you won us a number of premierships. I did. Um, you did. Mm. Um, but do you think you could have captained yourself? <laughs> Well, actually, I did. <laughs> you captain yourself. No, I captain. I captain. No, you captain New South I Wales. did captain New South you Wales. You did, yes. Because Shane pulled out because he was tired. <laughs> <laughs> I captained six games for New South Wales. Did not even come close to winning a game. And in fact, there was a one-day game where if they could have enforced the follow-on, they would have. <laughs> we were the worst team. I played a game. I captained a game in South Australia, and and like you know, not making excuses. One of the opening bowlers uh, broke his leg running into bowl. Another one of them got chicken pox, and another one did a hamstring. <laughs> this is so you got four fast bowlers in the team. I opened the bowling with the opening batsman in the second inning. It was just a yeah, it bowl. was a disaster. How do you break your leg bowling? I uh, didn't really have the best diet. <laughs> it was one of the world's greatest bowlers. Was that Don Nash? Don Nash, yeah, mate, great bowler. He's, he's, but he's he used called to the go Weber barbecue. Yeah. He's built like a Weber barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. He used to go through the drive-through, the the the. the um, KFC. KFC drive through And he used to say to the bloke who was driving him, look, if I buy a chicken, will you eat the meat? I just want the skin. <laughs> true story. <laughs> true story. Yeah. 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 But, but but I will say it again. One of the world's great bowlers. If he hadn't broken his leg that game, he would have been on that year's Ashes Tour and, you know, he'd be the guest instead of me. What's a captain doing a... In a cricket side, anyway, does like, a does a lot. So, really, yeah, because um, like it, it doesn't look like lot, you do much. Yeah. It does a lot. Yeah, you know what I mean? Well, he, he becomes a, a personal psychologist. He's, yeah. Um, oh, okay. I think you got to be able to perform yourself. Yeah. Um, right. But it's. I think the higher the level you go up, there's less times in a match you can make a decision that can change the course of the game. If you're playing lower levels. You know, you can you can change bowls around, do lots of different stuff. But the higher you go up, there might be only one or two points in the game. And I remember, you know, Ricky Ponting was one of our greatest batsmen of all time. But as a captain, I thought he missed a lot of key opportunities. He lost two Ashes series with some of the greatest teams of all time. You know, mm. McGrath, Gillespie, you know, Hayden, Langer. But what are those moments? Just you stand there. That's well, pretty no, much it. Well, no, that could be just changing a changing a bowl at the right time or bring right. someone on or just making a key field decision um, sometimes you fold your arms sometimes yeah. you have yeah, your hands in your say, pockets yeah. it's, you take an extra bit of chewing gum yeah, yeah all that sort of stuff yeah. <laughs> hey what was it like for, for you? Um, you you played alongside Warney yeah um, I played with Warney himself um, yeah. and it was sad to lose him it was difficult when both of you played together because you were both called Shane I had real trouble with that <laughs> I'm a sportsman it's a bit tough I, got, <laughs> I like everybody in the team to have different names like you're Shane W you're Shane L yeah, yeah. It's, it's very but, uh, but it wasn't like playing because everyone used to say I used to see him whenever you played with him you actually yeah. uh, bowled him yeah um, but was it was it tough being behind him? No. Uh, look, I kind of call myself a bit of a. You know, I'm a stunt man. Yeah. So I'd come in, I'd get all the glory, you know. Yeah. Like so, I'd come in for one go. So he had the poor guy. He had to play twelve months a year, yeah. doing all the workload. He'd get injured because he'd been doing all the workload. Yeah, sure. And then I'd come in for a test, get you know a bunch yep. of wickets, and goes, "Thanks, guys. I'll catch you later. <laughs> Here's a bit of cash, some chicks, and you know, that's great. I had the best job in the world. And also. I was bowling up the other end from him. That poor bloke was bowling up the other end from me. 
Do you know the funny thing? I remember fielding on the fence mm. um, at the MCG, and often you know, the crowd are pretty good to hear in Australia. You play over in England, you get sledged. I want to ask you about hecklers, right? And how right. you handle them, and and because mm. we we copped it on the sporting field. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you know, Lee, you fat. Whatever, I had to like, correct like, them yeah. all the time. It, it turns out they weren't saying Stewie's a banker. They, I, 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 I'm <laughs> oh, really? a cricket player. I'm not a banker. But I, <laughs> yeah. So it was, yes. But uh, how do you handle them in the, in the, in the comedy sets? I honestly... Do you attack them back? Do you, do you put them in oh, the headlock? I'm, I'm, I do a bit of crowd work and my type of stuff, so I don't mind like yeah. a bit of back and forth. But yeah. I feel like a lot of the time hecklers are over... It's exaggerated okay. how bad they are. Yeah. Not, like Nine times out of ten, the person who's heckling is really uh, like that you've invited it. Usually you've invited it. Mm -hmm, yeah. And then the ones that like are yelling out and being a dick, every time you rock up to a gig, the audience wants you to do well. Yeah. So right. like if they're, well, they're ruining it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're, well, not all the gigs in Australia, a lot of them are free, but you kind of go to these, lunch with Lee? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think a lot of it's like, I don't know, it's like, it's fine. Like I don't think they're really that big of an issue. And if someone's real bad, you just kind of gauge how much the audience hates them as well. Yeah, and well, then that's that, right. Tell that dictates how yeah. much you'll kind of give them well, shit. What was your the tactics, yeah? Mate, look, I, I, a couple of times I really did pile David, into them. David yeah. Brandon's son, maybe him. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, we, can't, we, we should, probably shouldn't talk about that because I can't say some of the words. But David, Brand, let me just say this. David Brandon's son was a great bloke and he shared a lot of my opinions. David, uh, David, was Brandon, David Brandon was an umpire in New South Wales. I yeah. right. sure did think he got yeah. any decisions right. Yeah. Yeah. And his yeah. son might have had the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You got a lot of things wrong, Dad. Let's just leave it there. I can, I can tell you the worst heckle I got wasn't even a proper heckle. Heckle. I was doing a gig uh, like early days in Tully, and uh, it was while the Australian Open was on while we were doing our show. We were doing it at a pub, and we were doing our set on stage. And as it like got to a point in the set where it was like a little bit quiet for a moment, and just as it went quiet, I heard a forty love. And I looked down, and a lady in the front row, instead of watching me, was He's watching, watching Nick Kyrgios play tennis. <laughs> and just it was so engrossed in it that I stopped and looked at her. The audience looked at her. She didn't even know. But the good news about I was I like, mean, wow, I've just been heckled by an umpire and, and, two states away. And the cool thing is, if, she, if she's watching Nick Kyrgios, she'd have seen the end of your set because he would have pulled out me. Yeah. You know? I, I want to talk about a time, Stuart. Um, we're both contracted right. to train, um, train cricket board. Okay. Um, and we had a planning session for three days. Uh -huh. And they went through everything from the marketing girls came in, told, told us what we have to do around marketing. Um, the fitness guys came in. It finally got to the end of the three days, and we were over it. We are ready, ready to leave. Mm. And then someone, uh, the CEO says, any more questions? And Stu puts his hand up. Everyone goes, fuck. And, and Stu says, I can't get a helmet to fit me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so this is actually the way that this so, happened. Talk this me through that. Too. Okay, so they changed from, you might see on the TV now, they've got these plastic helmets. Yeah. They're not made of plastic, but they're, you know, like riding helmets and stuff like that. And they changed them and they put them on. So they're pre-moulded helmet, helmets. Yeah. I wore a size seven, sorry, <laughs> size seven uh, helmet in the old helmets. These new ones, they said, no, they fit everybody. I put it on my head and it li literally, it just, sort of, it just perched on top of my head like that. And, and mate, sat, I can't bat to save my life, right? And you got I, bad eyes. I, I can't see, yeah. I can't bat. I got hit in the head 20 or 30 times, obviously had no impact on my personality at all. I, don't, I can't remember where I live, so I'm hoping Chain gives me a lift home. But they, I said to him, I said, listen, so what you want me to do? I said, I can't get a helmet that fits. This yeah. doesn't fit me. You're telling us that we're contractually obliged to wear it. I can't. What are you going to do? And, and the guy's just, and seriously, I put it on my head and it's just sitting on top of my head like that. Yeah. And I go, what? But the boys are going, this is going to go. Anyway, but uh, do they that really have a helmet to see yeah. you? Yeah, I, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what? So they let me wear the old helmets, right? But this is a true story. One of my mates. It was a half-cut Swiss ball, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Simon, Simon Millington, he, he, got, he, he owned Woodworm, the, 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 the bat manufacturer. Yeah. Woodworm is in Hong Kong. He's got a massive head, Millers as well, right? <laughs> He, um, he, he went to India and he was going to start doing, as well as the bats, he was going to start doing soft kits. So, you know, yeah. gloves, pads and helmets. And he said, look, and, and that's great. We signed off on the deal. And I'm like, look, I don't suppose you've got a helmet to fit me, do you? And he said, oh, yes, sir. We have the McGill. <laughs> the McGill. McGill. <laughs> the McGill. <laughs> that's, that's what it's called. The that's biggest so helmet. Real. Oh, yes, sir. The you McGill. Turn up, you turn it upside down. You'll see that was a kid swimming pool. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Hey, Shad, I want to ask you about, because um, uh, you, you obviously need confidence in sport. 
is, is comedy a confidence game as well? Oh, you yeah. you got to yeah. get up and, and be ready to kind of do it, I yep. guess. It's funny, though, because when you're backstage, I reckon you'd be like, oh, you've got to be so confident to do comedy. I reckon I would share the back room with some of the least confident people right. you've seen before some shows. Hmm. But, yeah, I mean, it's so weird to be comparing me telling jokes to people that have done sport. But at the same time, cricket and comedy, I think is kind of like yeah. similar in the sense that like, you know, comedy is considered art yeah, it is. when it's not really it art is. and cricket is considered sport yep. when it's not really sport. <laughs> Cricket's considered warfare. <laughs> when people talk about going in the trenches, I'm going, mate, listen, I, I've never been in a trench, but I'm pretty sure getting yeah. hit for six sixes is yeah. not as bad as getting six bullets pumped in. What, is it, what is it? Like cricket's just basically competitive <laughs> council work, isn't it? <laughs> you guys just <laughs> standing around looking at a well, bit well, of paper. Well, so, <laughs> Simon, yeah, Simon, still, Cook, Simon Cook wouldn't say that. He was a fast bowler for New South Wales and Australia. <laughs> oh, and he yeah. worked for South Sydney Council. He did. Oh, yeah. And in the off-season, he drove his steamroller up onto the back of a truck. The plastic seat broke. He fell off and the steamroller ran over no. him. Crushed him. He genuinely, oh, yeah. honestly, yeah. got run over. By a like on Looney Tunes. He's like, like Wiley Coyote. Yeah. He got run over by a steamroller. Oh, my God. So he, he replaced McGrath in a test match, took seven wickets. Yeah. Um, got run over in the off-season. Mm. We always say the only time he's ever flat out at work. Is, <laughs> <laughs> oh right? But um, it, it didn't get his head or his knees, yeah. but, it, but it broke his ribs and yeah. his arm and... Yeah. And, and 12 months later, he was back playing um, first class cricket. Yeah, yeah. 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 he just looked like a, like a used up toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's ridiculous. He's not so flat anymore. And I'll tell you what, the other funny thing about it's, n- n- it's not funny, obviously, but the other amusing thing about that story. No, it is, is kind of funny that we just completely <laughs> bullied a guy that got run over by a street. The guy, no, no. <laughs> he's, mate, don't, you don't need to worry about Cookie. He's moving to France on Sunday. He's, <laughs> but but the, other, the funny thing about the story, the guy who was working with him never went back to work. So Cookie, as soon as he was, he was fit and healthy again, he, yeah. as Shane said, went back and played first class cricket, but also went back to work for the council. Mm. Wow. The guy who was watching watching him was so traumatised, couldn't work ever again. Oh, stress leave he was. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, well, true story. Yeah, yeah, true story. Hey, um, I want to ask you both, um, uh, heroes growing up. So who were your heroes growing so up? He's, you're asking us both? Should yeah. we answer it? Or? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to miss. I think we want that one, yeah. do we? No. I don't really Come have on. any heroes growing but, up. So what do you got really? next? Yeah. <laughs> well, heroes. But De- Dennis Lilly was one of yours, wasn't he? Dennis Lilly. I used to call Dennis Lilly Uncle Dennis. I, I, love, I, I still love him. I, I think Not he's, in a weird way. No, no, Uncle Stewie's the weird one. Uncle Dennis is good. That's what he was dreaming of. Though. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 the reason I, my, my dad and my grandpa played for Western Australia, but the reason I played cricket is probably because of Dennis, because I wanted to be him. You wanted to be a fast bowler. You I did. wanted to be a fast bowler. You wanted to kill people. I tried so many times. <laughs> I just could not bowl fast but to your, save my your life. Your grandfather Charlie, he was yep. a fast bowler. He got Bradman out didn't he, in the forties. That's that's true. Uh, my 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 grandpa opened the batting and bowling for WA. And the cool thing about my grandpa is he. He was a chucker. He, he used yeah. to king him, and, and that's the, that's that's the the cricket equivalent of having a convict in the family. Right. It's like if you got a chucker, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's What's good. the like, like? You're not allowed to throw the ball, mate. I know, but like with the spin bowling. Yeah. Like, what's the what's the trick? Oh, you obviously got to be incredibly gifted yeah. physically. I mean, so, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Looking at the greatest spin balls of all time, they are unbelievable cover models, aren't they? <laughs> Haven't seen many of them in a swimsuit, but... <laughs> Mate, don't need a swimsuit. <laughs> but what's the, one, like... too, one too many items of clothing on. <laughs> <laughs> How's it, like, what's the, you know what I mean? Mate, look. The the number the, I think the similarity between Shane and I are you is flicking. Are you like, no, no, you got to be, be, you gotta be yeah. strong, right? Yeah. But yeah. I I think yeah. Um, you know the guys that aren't don't have any physical strength to them. They work on they call it guile and deception. I don't want guile and deception. I want to mess you up. Mm. Right? Yeah. So for me, it's like it's that's there's aggression. For bowling. You've got it. It's an intimidate. It's a bullying. Yeah. Cricket, cricket, well, you're just pegging a ball at someone, man. <laughs> like, so I bowl slow. Right. So your grandma could hit me for six. Right. Um, can she do it twice? And if she does hit me for six, <laughs> I'm going to get stuck into her, her grandma. So you know. But the, 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 the reality is, you, you've got to have some sort of presence. You mm-hmm. do. And you've got to believe in it. I think I've just torn a pick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say, like, how do you spin it? Hard. Like, is it like... You want to have a forearm off? Yeah. 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 Is, that, is that the whole manoeuvre? Well, Stuart, Stuart turned the ball that much. Right? Yeah. right. Mid- minimum, That's right. the only thing about me that was that yeah. big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is that, your, is that your play as well after the games? You're like, man, you think I'm pretty good with flicking up yeah. my fingers. Yeah. Well, 
Well, that, that reminds, and next question. Well, that, 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 that reminds us. Well, By the way, I'm a world champion. Well, one of the great stories, <laughs> sure, sure, just before, just before we, uh, we, we were back in the back of the single days, yeah. sure and I were rooming together, beautiful big suite down in Adelaide, <laughs> and um, we, we had a we had a couple of lady friends, and um, we're both you know, well known to the concierge because we we're both in the cricket team at the time, and. Um, I ordered a bowl of wine, and he, he saw he sees Stu walk past the back of the room in a, just in a towel. And yeah. then later we ordered some more wine, and he sees me in a towel. And I said, Stu, he thinks we're rooting each other. <laughs> <laughs> mate, mate, you should have seen the look on the guy's face. <laughs> He's like, look at me. He looked at Chain and gone, oh. <laughs> uh, hey, and, and we'll stick with the story that there were ladies in the room. Yeah, yeah, but, sure. Now, now sure Shad, they were. Shad, you're doing, you're doing your, 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 uh, your single man show. It's um, about... Now explain to, to to listeners. It's about your time in Colombia where yeah. you almost killed a guy. Yeah, it's about my first uh, overseas yeah. trip where I um, I got high on acid uh, <laughs> and almost killed a guy in the jungle in Colombia. Wow! Did yeah. you know that it was a guy that you were trying to kill? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, question. yeah. It was um, it was kind of. <laughs> It was, oh, I can say it because the run's done by the time yeah, this comes out. Yeah. So ba- basically, I was traveling with a British backpacker, yeah. a mate of mine as well, and um, we had been on a massive bender yeah. um, of Colombia's finest, right. which is incredibly cheap. Go to Colombia. Right. But um, we... Well, we're obviously talking meat. Yeah, yes, of yeah, course. We are. Yeah. And we decided to go through the, um, we got told to go to this, this beach, and we went <laughs> walking through the jungle. But when we got there, we were so, like, run down. And when I got to pay for our little trip up the hill, um, I've noticed that I had three types of acid in my wallet, so we decided to have them and go through the jungle. Mm. And after it's a good idea. getting lost yeah. and nightfall, we ended up on a beach, mm-hmm. and the British backpacker turned to me and said, "Can you bury me up to my head in the sand?" <laughs> And we, we were like, okay. <laughs> Only if you do it back to me. <laughs> yeah. So we buried him and it was just his little head sitting in the sand on the beach. We left him to go and get some more drinks and whatnot. Oh, I know, man. And we went to come back and find him. And as we walked back onto the beach, some of the locals stopped us. And they were like, yeah. hey, don't go out on the beach at night time. Uh, came and crocodiles oh, yeah. wander the beach at night time. Oh, no. <laughs> then we had to go out and try and find uh, yeah, the but head. Also, also, mate, you know, like, have you seen <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence? That's a movie. It's got David Bowie in it. That's how the, that's how the Japanese killed him in the POW camp. <laughs> they buried him up to his neck. Oh, no, this guy wanted it, mate. I don't know. you got to oh, do it. Mate, he wanted it. Yeah. Mate, you, mate, he wanted it. But I don't know if he's still alive. I don't I think he can still say that. Really. <laughs> you don't know. I haven't spoken to him since. Who knows oh, right. if he's... Well, never found him. I just assume that he's alive for All they reasons. found was a pair of shoulders <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> oh, all right. Hey, so I want to ask yeah. you about it, mate. I hope you're okay talking about it. But yes. May 2021. 21, um, right. You were caught up in the middle of a... I know. A love triangle? A lo- was it, well, it wasn't a love triangle, was it? You got oh, a, it was you, a different triangle. Yeah. You got, you, got a, you got a bloody... Golden triangle. You got kidnapped, mate. I did get kidnapped. And that, so do you want to, like... For the listeners, you want to talk through how was that? Because I've been as a mate, yeah, it must be a terrifying time. Yeah, it was pretty bad, actually. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you the funny thing. No. I'll tell you the funny thing. Yeah. So, so I go out, and the, I, I, I'm from Perth, Chad. You know, I didn't know where we were going. No. I'd never been to this suburb that we drove to. I was, I was in the car for about an hour and a half from. So where they know, pick you up in Cremorne? Picked me up in, in, in you know, in Cremorne, then drove yeah. me out somewhere. I don't even can't even remember what the name of the place is, but it was about an hour and a half away from my joint, from the city. Mm. And we're getting there, and I knew things were going bad when the lights. So the white street lights go to orange street lights, go to no street lights. I'm going, oh Jesus, Jesus we're okay. in trouble yeah. here. But then you know, they tell me to get my kit off, and um, well, they made you get nude. Yeah, I nude. Yeah, and the wow. first thing I thought about was, Jesus, I'm not wearing any undies. And then I realised, well, I don't really care because I'm going to have to get it all off. And then the second thing I thought, it's just a true story, so I'm about to get the living, you know, um, I thought, I haven't groomed. (laughs) 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 I honestly thought, I'm thinking, oh, God. God, they're never going to even got find the, my Got the university <laughs> vagina. <laughs> That's it. I look like a 1970s Playboy model. <laughs> There's a map of the greatest Soviet socialist republic. It was in Tasmania. <laughs> and, and then, so how, how long did they keep you for? Did they, did, were they physical uh, with you? Or? Yeah, yeah. Got, got slapped around a bit, um, which was a bit of a bummer. But um, I've been hit a bit in my time anyway. Yeah, but when, you, when you're a smart ass, you tend to get cleaned yeah. up a bit. Um, I remember actually once I was at the Creed Academy and the guy, you know, 
we, this guy had been hitting blokes at the Creed Academy and we worked out as a group that if he hit one more person, he'd be kicked out. Right. So right. I went, I went, yeah. oh, it's okay, I'll take it, I don't care. So I'd get rid of him. I baited him for, you know, a couple of weeks. I, re- <laughs> I, gr- I groomed him to hit me, which <laughs> I kind of haven't got the whole concept of grooming. But, you know, so I groomed him to hit me and we were in the aquatic centre at North Adelaide and he smacked me in the face, right? Oh. And I said, st- <laughs> and I've done this twice now. Just a tip for young players. If somebody hits you in the head, don't say, is that all you've got? <laughs> because I'll tell you what the response is. No, yeah. it's not all I've got. Yeah. So instead of one black guy, two black guys. Yes. And I've done that twice in my life. Is oh, that all you got? No. Did you say that when you were out in this no, I outer didn't. suburb? No. Yeah, I, right. I, I did say, when they started here, I said, well, would you mind if I stand up? You know, because I was sitting on all. What was going through your head? Yeah. Oh, I just didn't want to get hurt. survival. Yeah, yeah, it's survival. You just work. Like, lots was going through my head, but yeah. um, who'd you think of? Oh no, I was just really, survival. No, no, I was just trying to work out what the next move. What, what, what's the next move? What, what, what? You know, say what do I do? How do? What's the next thing to happen? Fuck it out. Yeah. But it's Did right. you? How, when you, how are you now, mate? Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Another drink. No, I'm lining yeah. them up here. Can, can, can how, I, how you going now? Yeah, I'm like, good. Mate, I'm pretty yeah. hot. I look, the, the huge advantage I've got over most people is that I'm physically gifted and I'm incredibly attractive. Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, I mean, it doesn't like, really don't matter touch what Don't too much. He's so handsome. Worst yeah. case scenario, <laughs> I'm still as hot as fuck. <laughs> so, can, can I ask this question? I obviously don't yes. have to answer it or not, but okay. you're heading out there and... Did you know that, like, you were just heading out there for a beatdown? Or did, no. were you heading out there being like, fuck, I might, yeah. this might be it? Could be toast, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. So at what point yeah. did you realise, like, was there a point where you were like, oh, I might come out of this? No, the whole time I was thinking I'd like to, I'd like to get out yeah. of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but um, not until they dropped me off, until I was out of the car. But even then, because then, you know... There were consequences after they dropped me off too, but but. Um, well, so they thread you into the future, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, we're going to come and see you again. But 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 I. Um, wow. Yeah, it's it's it was interesting. Um, but but look, I'll tell you I'll tell you a good story. Um, so I get dropped off. Didn't didn't know if I had any money. Didn't have my phone. Didn't you know? And I'm dropped off in an, in another area that I don't really know where it was. Ah, uh, yeah, it was somewhere near um, Canterbury, somewhere out there. And they dropped me off, and I'm thinking, well, how do I get home? And it was in the middle of Ramadan, and um, there was a, a, a cab outside the chicken shop there, and um, the guy, I, I just thought, look, I'll jump in the cab, and I'll yeah. head home, and I'll work out how to pay for it when we get close to home. Yeah. And I get in the cab, and after a little while, the guy who was driving the car, um, he said to me, uh, look, sir, I hope you don't mind, but... You don't look too good to me. Are you, oh. are you okay? Can I, you know, can I do anything? I said, oh, look, it's a family problem, which was true. And uh, I'm, f- I'm fine. He said, would you like to come home with me to my house and I'll, uh, and you can eat with my family? Really? Yeah. Hey. yeah, yeah this guy. Who was this hero? This, mate, he's a hero. Like, his dad said hero. So he invited me back to his home. And um, when I got back um, home... Um, he said to me, you don't have to pay for the cab. It was 90 bucks cab fare. You know, yeah, seriously. He's, wow. a, he's a superstar, that guy. Do you ever, so, do you ever yeah. find out who he is? I or know who he is. I, yeah. I'll, I'll, go and see, I'll go and see him when it's all wrapped up and done. Yeah. But um, he, he, seriously, he was just such a nice man. Like, would you like to, can I look after you? Yeah. Like, in terms of well, being nice people. So you've gone really from one, the... of, one of the most horrible experiences to mm. one of the probably yeah. best you'll ever have. Yeah, what a great bloke. Humanity. So, yeah. yeah. So I won't hear a well. bar about anybody, uh, you know, getting stuck into... Anybody who's driving a cab or, no. you know, people from, you know, Muslim background. That's because kind of, um, that's kind yeah. of part of the That's the part of the whole Eid thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly right, mate. Yeah. And that, you know, and I, and I, and I still go to Eid functions and, you mm. know, because that's special, you know. Yeah, I, so I ask wild. everyone to come to this show um, uh, and I'll ask you first, uh, if a young boy or girl wants to go into the world of comedy, mm. what, what advice would you give them? Um, oh, man, I wish I could say something funny. <laughs> but, oh, okay, mate. No. I'll come up with something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll, you'll pick it <laughs> Just up. Just to do everything. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Sick of carrying you, blokes. Yeah. Uh, no, I think I've, like I've, I've, you just got to. Honestly, my my biggest thing is like, you just got to go and do it. I know there's like a lot of places that do a big thing in like come and do like oh come and do this comedy course and whatever and there's a million different ways to yep. try and get into it but the biggest thing is nothing nothing works better than just getting up <laughs> yeah doing it on stage and just going and doing it and my other thing that that would be. Give it a few. 
some people hit it and it's like duck to water bang other people it's like there's a little bit in there and then they go yep so it's like I'd go give it a handful yeah get in there and, and give sport. it a good crack same sport yeah, yeah. and still a young boy or girl wants to go into the world of professional sport what advice well, would you give them so the following on from what Chad says the big thing for me is like, if you're a bowler for example or even if you're a batsman if you make a mistake so you try and do it right every time Okay, yep. you try and have your best show. You try and bowl your best ball. You try and, you know, play your best cover drive. But if you fuck it up, it's actually more about so you, the, the 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 line at which you succeed or fail is if you can get up and do it again. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you have the worst show of your life, it's actually getting back on the bike that does it. Right? And, I, and I'd say like it's a classic thing people say was like you ought, like you you learn more from doing bad. Like, not you should always do bad, but it's like you learn more from having a bad set. Mm. You do. Than yeah. you do from, yeah. like, just crushing one. Because it's like, oh, now I know the things that I need to tweak and I need to, yeah. I need to change, which I think is, like, a, a big part of it. Like, accepting the failure, enjoying and it, it, yeah, it like, is part right, of it. I mean, it's, it's one of the worst movies of all time, but uh, Balboa, right? He's got this line, which he actually ripped off Churchill, but that, that doesn't mind. It doesn't matter. But, but the line is, it's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and get up and keep moving forward. And that, to me, is what yeah. succeeding in just about anything is. Oh, because well. get up and get on with it, you know? Who would have thought you were so profound? Oh, sure. no, mate, yeah. seriously. Jeez. I quote Stallone left, right and centre. Adrian! <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean Churchill there. <laughs> hey, um, yeah, we're here at, we're at Barefoots um, in Kirribilli. Yes. We're nestled under the Harbour Bridge here. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, we're going to have some fantastic lunch now. Um... And I want to thank you both for coming on the show, Stu. It's great to see you. It's great to see you're in a good headspace. And I, I, I just know how yeah. important it is for you guys for to have people like me hanging out with you. Yeah, yeah it is so, an absolute pleasure. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, and, and look, you know what? No problems, mate. No, it's, it's right. great. It's and awesome. And I like, now know the answer to a trivia question. <laughs> Shad, I, I, I really do enjoy doing the podcast with you, Afternoon Sport, every day. Um, <laughs> and sorry. here comes a few margaritas, you beauty. Um, we're at Bamford's. Come down and check it out. It's a really, really cool bar. There's some great, great food. Some Plenty great of tequila wine. and sex Plenty on the beach. Plenty of tequila and sex the beat. Hey. Thanks, guys. Cheers. That's it for Lunch with Lee this week. A big thank you goes out to our guests, Stuart McGill and Shad Wicker. Thanks to Banfords for putting on lunch today. Fantastic little wine bar here down in Kirribilli. Make sure you hit follow on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from. And do us a favour, hit five stars. And if you're there and you're passionate, please leave a review. And come check us out on Instagram at I'm at Lunch with Lee. Our official Lunch with Lee photography was done by Felicity Kelly. You can find her on Instagram at Felicity Kelly Portraits. And once again, thanks to our producer. We'll be back next time on Lunch with Lee to talk about more things about sport, music and business on another cracking episode of Lunch with Lee. We'll see you then. <laughs>